Okay, so we've now learned about uh, independent random variables formally after having learned about it informally for quite a while. Now we're going to take that understanding one step further with conditional independence. Okay, so conditional independence. This is something that looks really complicated from the math, but I think once I get to the examples and kind of explain how it works, it'll make sense um, intuitively. So the idea here is that two variables, two random variables, x and y, are only independent, conditional upon some other random variable z. So what this means is that the random variables x and y might be related to each other if z is out of the picture. So we've got an equation here that looks a lot like the equation for independent random variables that we had in the preceding video. But now we've got this additional term z here, this additional random variable z. So now we're saying for each of the possible states of x, the possible states of y, and the possible states of z, we have conditional independence if the joint probability of x and y given z conditional on z is equal to the probability of the state x given z multiplied by the probability of y given z. So a lot to take in here, right? But it's the same idea as the equation that we had for independence in general. It's just that we've added in the extra twist of that independence only being true given that some other random variable z is in play. So let's look at a couple of examples to make sense of this. So the probability of throwing heads on two consecutive tosses might not be independent if there's two possible coins that could be used. One of them is a regular fair coin, and the other one's a two-headed coin <laughs> uh, with heads on both sides. So that's the conditioning on Z. So Z, in this case, has two states Z. Um, so the unitalicized Z is what is the coin, you know, the coin type, and then there's two possible italicized Z types. So we have a regular coin, fair coin, with heads and tails, or a coin with two heads. So in this situation, X and Y are independent, but only when we take into account the information about what kind of coin is being used. Because if we don't take that information into account, if we don't condition on whether it's a fair coin or a two-headed coin, then there could be a relationship between the two coin tosses. If we're using the regular coin, then the probability of X and Y is completely independent anyway. But if we're using the two-headed coin, then these two probabilities are not independent because um, there's a 100% probability of getting heads on both throws. So conditioning on this third random variable, X and Y are independent in all cases. So we have conditional independence. And similarly, here's another example. So if X is the probability of a wrestler at the Olympics winning gold, and Y is the probability of a weightlifter winning gold, well, I think it's safe to assume that those probabilities are generally independent. However, we could condition upon whether both of these people come from a country with a well-known doping scandal. So if there's widespread doping in this country that is helping the competitors across any strength competition be gigantic and make it easy for them to win gold, then these two probabilities are not independent in all cases unless we condition upon that extra information of did these competitors come from a country with a doping scandal or not. Nice, so with that, we've wrapped up all of the general probability theory that you need to know. Up next, we're going to start getting more specific and tailoring this probability theory to machine learning problems.